This movie review is brought to you by Keo6283. The 2010 version of Robin Hood comes from director Ridley Scott and stars Russell Crowe. An archer known as Robin Longstride takes command against England's corruption and a French invasion. A subscriber of mine commented on one of my videos and asked me to review the 2010 version of Robin Hood, a film I have not seen in around 10 years. And before rewatching this movie for the first time in that long, I'll be honest, I barely remembered a single thing from this movie. Though the reason I decided to go through with this review is because it's an epic, it stars Russell Crowe, and it has director Ridley Scott behind the camera, and when these two get together, it's always a really good time on the screen, so I thought to myself, why not? I want to rewatch the movie. I like movies like this, so I'll give it a go. Critics back in 2010 slammed this film. I'm guessing it has to do with how this movie is unlike any other Robin Hood movie that we've seen before. It's much grittier. The tone is a lot darker. It's a Ridley Scott film with Russell Crowe. What else do you expect? This is not going to be Robin Hood in tights once again with all these colorful scenes, a lot of humor. It's a lot different than those movies. And what else would you expect from a Russell Crowe and Ridley Scott Robin Hood project? I can't imagine you went into this movie in 2010 and expected it to be a comedy. Come on, man. This is a Ridley Scott movie. It's going to be epic. It's going to be action-packed. What else would you think this movie is going to be like? Diving right into this film's cast, everyone in this movie surprised me. Like I said, it's been a long time since I last watched this movie, so pretty much everything having to do with this movie left my memory. I had no idea what to expect 10 years later re-watching this movie. Of course, Russell Crowe is great as Robin Hood, a character that he was born to play, just like the character he played in Gladiator. Somebody who is very heroic, shows no fear, is a great leader, an all-around awesome character that Russell Crowe tends to play a lot in these kinds of movies, and it never gets old. I could watch Russell Crowe play characters like these for years on end. Everyone else in the film is good too. Kate Blanchett is slowly becoming one of my favorite actresses. Max von Sydow, God Rest His Soul is great in the movie. Mark Strong is always really good in movies as a villain. And even Oscar Isaac, an actor who doesn't typically play villains, also pleasantly surprised me playing the cocky, arrogant king of England. Of course, though, this is a Ridley Scott Robin Hood movie. And what else would you expect watching this other than some epic scenes? Because the action sequences in Robin Hood when they are on the screen are a ton of fun. They are of large scale. And the music helps sell the magnitude of this film's landscape. One thing we tend to forget an awful lot about, though, in epic movies like this are the stories. Obviously, more times than not, when I turn on epics, I'm just there solely for the action sequences. I turn my brain off for two, maybe two and a half hours just to watch some incredible, bloody action sequences. But in this film... There aren't as many action sequences as you would expect. Which surprisingly, I don't mind that much. After the first 30 minutes, the film takes another hour to hour and a half to develop its characters and their relationships. We spend a lot of time with Kate Blanchett and Russell Crowe in this small village where at first they are at ends, but as the film progresses, they start to realize that they kind of like each other. And while we've seen something like that before, the film integrates small character moments that are very effective to make me care a lot more about both of their characters. Not to mention that every character in the film who I consider important that's introduced at the very least gets a nice send-off by the end of the movie. They're not just introduced quickly and then you forget about them. Every character that is introduced that has a name gets something that's more than just a one-off scene. So like I said, it's been a very long time since the first time I watched this movie, around 10 years or so. So going into this movie, I had no idea what to expect. All all I knew was that the movie was slammed by critics, so in a way, my expectations weren't very high. I somewhat expected this movie to be kind of bad. But thankfully, Robin Hood from 2010 isn't a bad movie at all. Let me also say that I watched the director's cut, which is about 15 minutes longer. I'm not sure if the director's cut makes your viewing experience much better over that of the theatrical cut. If it does and you know, please let me know down below in the comment section. I would love to 
hear what the differences are. But I do have a couple of gripes with this version of Robin Hood. First and foremost, it's a Ridley Scott war epic. So why is it rated PG-13? If it was rated R, my score for this movie would probably be way higher, but it's only PG-13, so they could only do as much as they possibly could without getting that R rating, so if you're going into this movie and expecting to see a ton of blood and gore, the most you get is a couple of bloody spots in the water by the film's finale. They should have just gone ahead and made this an R-rated film, I'm not really sure why they didn't. And remember how I said there aren't that many action sequences in this Robin Hood movie? Well, yeah, it's true. The action is somewhat lackluster. You see the poster of this movie with Russell Crowe holding a bow and arrow, and yet there are barely any moments where Russell Crowe actually utilizes his bow and arrow. When he does, it's awesome, but we didn't get nearly enough of it. Before rewatching this movie, I thought we were going to get a lot of action sequences with Russell Crowe firing off these arrows one after the other, getting a ton of headshots, but unfortunately, Unfortunately, we barely see it in the movie. I'm not really sure why they did not include more of these sequences. Plus, also, just looking at the poster, there is some blood on Russell Crowe's face. Yeah, you would think this would be a rated R film just based on the poster. And this one is a little bit of a nitpick, but in the scenes where we spend all that time at the small town of Nottingham with Kate Blanchett and Russell Crowe, I wish their relationship got the chance to develop a little bit more. Adding some emotion would have really helped this. Maybe if they made this movie three hours long, adding some more bow and arrow scenes as well as emotion to those character development scenes would have made this movie better. But all in all, I was taken by surprise by this Robin Hood movie. Yes, I have not seen this movie in 10 years and my opinion of the movie 10 years ago does not matter anymore because I can't remember a single thing about my viewing back in 2011. But now that I've rewatched the movie, I can say with my honest opinion that this movie is not nearly as bad as critics said it was back in 2010. It's a very underrated Ridley Scott picture and I am giving this film a 78%. Alright, for those of you who also happen to see Robin Hood, be sure to let me know below in the comment section what your thoughts are of it. Do you think this movie is bad, or do you think it's not nearly as bad as some of the critics said it was? I have some other movie reviews I promise to do that I have to catch up on, like Alexander, I gotta review that movie, someone requested it, so I gotta do that for them, as well as reviewing the rest of the Fast and Furious movies, because it looks like Fast and Furious 9 is actually coming out in June. Wow, I'm really surprised by that. As always, if you are new to my channel, click the subscribe button and give this video a thumbs up if you enjoyed it. Thank you all so much for watching this video and I hope you all have a fantastic day.